Lord's Day uh, in Virginia. Uh, we have just experienced a snowstorm and so most of our churches in this area in North Carolina and, and these parts uh, are closed. Uh, more so some are closed uh, because of COVID and some are closed because of the snowstorm. But certainly we thank you for sharing with us today. This is Pastor William A. Freeman Sr. of Mount Zion Baptist Church, Chesapeake, Virginia. We share each and every Sunday with you, you and especially you who uh, partake with us. We pray you will continue to support our ministry, to continue to watch the ministry, and continue to share and share our posts with others so they may hear what thus saith the Lord. I'm not going to take you a lot of time today. I want you to turn with your Bibles, in your Bibles, to Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6, we're going to begin reading in verse 27. Luke chapter 6, begin reading at verse number 27. Jesus Christ is speaking in this text of scripture. He says, But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. And to him that smiteth thee on the one cheek, uh, offer also the other. And him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. Give to every man that asks of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. For if ye love them which love you, what thank ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And if ye do good to them which do good to you, what thank uh, have ye, for sinners also do even the same? And if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what thank have ye, uh, for sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again? Uh, but love ye your enemies, and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great. And ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Uh, I want to talk uh, today on the text, uh, Love Your Enemies. Love Your Enemies. Let us pray that God, we thank you today for blessing us to come on this beautiful Sunday morning to share with this, uh, your people, with those who uh, have tuned in, uh, those who are watching the post, and those who are listening live by Facebook, and those that shall hear us in the week on the YouTube. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us a chance to be able to come on this social media platform to be able to uh, give a word uh, to those uh, who are, are, are willing to hear what thus saith the Lord. And dear God, let us speak as your servant with truth, might, and power. In Jesus' name, amen. Love your enemies. Today there is a text of scripture that calls for our attention in a world such as that we live in. In this day and time when uh, love of God love of neighbor, and love of our enemies and of opponents that differ from us in opinion, in persuasion, and even of race, creed, color, or political ideology is the preferred norm and constancy of this 21st century society. Now we need look no further than how we treat each other in our daily existence to know that we as a Christian church have a long ways to go to be positioned in the place of the kingdom mindset and of his principal uh, mandate uh, placed and given by Christ Jesus our Lord in his sermon on the plain. You see Jesus Christ had just previously chosen his 12 disciples whom he also named apostles. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Luke chapter 6 and verse 13. The Bible explains this to us. He now takes his 12 apostles 
down with him and stood in the plain. And stood in the plain. And they uh, uh, were there with his disciples. And a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem. And from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon. Which came to hear him. And to be healed of their diseases. And they that were vexed. And with unclean spirits. And they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went out of him and healed them all. Jesus Christ dealt with the multitude on the level of their physical needs, of their vexations, and those even with clean spirits that some of the multitude of people needed healing from. The Bible says, for the virtue went out of him, causing physical healing to take effect in all that needed physical healing that day. He healed them all. That's Luke chapter 6, verse 18 through 20. Now after this series of events, Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, now begins to lay out to the multitude of people, the company of his disciples, and, and to all future disciples and followers, that will hear and follow his kingdom of heaven discourse. Those who will follow the principles of God's kingdom living. You see, it is futuristic in nature, yet there are general applications to be made and given also for current church age Christians to abide by vis-a-vis uh, -vis, or to come face to face with the kingdom of heaven principles in the general state of discipleship required by Jesus Christ's followers and believers. The portion of his sermon on the plain that I want to focus on this morning begins in Luke chapter 6, beginning at verse number 27. Jesus Christ is now teaching us principles, precepts, and commands that are necessary for Christian believers uh -huh, to follow and obey in order to continually be shown spiritually as his true believers. Look at verse number 27 of Luke chapter 6. Jesus Christ speaks these words. He speaks them clearly. He speaks them succinctly. He speaks them without reservation and without hesitation. Jesus, my friend, makes an unapologetic statement to his disciples, to his followers, and to believers that he gives us as an ultimate and imperative command for all the follow that would name the name of Jesus as their Lord and Savior. My friend, listen to the text. He states these words, But I say unto you which hear, Love your enemies. Do good to them which hate you. All I can say when I look at it is, is what are you talking about, Lord? Well, the Lord God of hosts is telling all of the believers and followers of his to love the people who cause us the most pain and despise us the most in our lives. The ones who wish that we would cease to exist as followers of Christ Jesus. Some want to see us uh, go out of existence as human beings. They hate uh, us so much with the hatred of Satan himself. I sometimes would ask the question, are you telling the Christian believers to do this in a time of hatred, dissension, racism, and discontent by others towards us and who we are? Well, my friends, the answer is still yes. My friends, my brothers, my sisters in Christ, that is exactly what Jesus Christ commands us to do. 
He commands it, and we ought to follow. He's not asking us what do we think about it. He is not suggesting uh, what we consider doing. You see, he is commanding all born again, baptized believers in Christ Jesus, to love your enemies. Not only that, but he also say, do good to them which hate you. Jesus Christ is telling the church age followers. He's telling the future kingdom age inhabitants. And he's telling all the eternal state dwellers of his kingdom of all ages that to love your enemy is to conquer and to triumph over hate of all kinds. To love your enemies is to show who God is and who, what his essence is made up of. You see, for the Bible declares in 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 and 8, the, Bible, the divine words of truth. It says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God. <laughs> Excuse me, and knoweth God. Listen, church, to love one another as brothers and sisters in Christ and to love your enemies is to exhibit the true love of God. And it is to reflect his loving nature and the essence, the true essence of the being of God. You see, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Why? For love is of God and not of Satan. Oh, I need to say that again. Love is of God and not of Satan. You see, God is love. And God is of love. Satan, the devil, Lucifer, all the names of that fallen angel who hates God and is an against or, or is an antichrist of Jesus Christ, my Lord. The devil is of hate. You see, uh, his essence, his entire makeup, and his spiritual con composition is all about hate. Jesus tells us also in John chapter 10 and verse number 10. He said that the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. You see, my friend, Satan is a thief that steals and tries to rob you of all your joy. He comes to kill mankind both physically and spiritually. The goal of the devil is to destroy any and everything that looks to be a God or that represents godly living or godly principles. See, that devil, he energizes the unbelievers spiritually and feed them the poison of hate towards any and everybody else. Yet yeah, Jesus Christ. Oh, I wish somebody would say, yet yeah, Jesus Christ. Yet yeah, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, tells us in Luke 6, 28, to bless them that curse you and to pray for them that despitefully use you. Jesus says it. He said, bless those demonically feel unbelievers who would destroy you if they could. In this context, Jesus Christ is telling us to speak well of our enemies. He's also telling us to confer prosperity or happiness upon them even though they curse you and call you everything but a child of God. 
Jesus said, not only bless them, or not only confer happiness and prosperity upon them, but pray for them which despitefully use you. Jesus said it. I didn't. Jesus commands it. And we must listen and obey his commands. We are to truly be his children and people of God's holy kingdom. See, even those that despitefully use us, those that express malice and hatred towards us are also to be put on our daily prayer list. Do you hear what I'm saying? Even those that, that hate us and, and don't want nothing to do with us, we still are told to pray for them. Put them on your prayer list. Put them on that same prayer list that you got your friends on. You got your family on. Got your country community on. Got your church on. Pray for them the same way. The Apostle Paul tells the church in Rome, and to all that were here, God's holy, God's inerrant, God's infallible, God's absolutely true, a plenary word. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 20, he said, Therefore, if thy enemies hunger, feed them. Oh, I know that's a hard pill to swallow, but we've got to swallow it because this is what God tells us to do. He said that they thirst, give him drink. What happens, Brother Paul? For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fires on his head. Then the apostle says, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Oh, you ought to hear what I'm saying today. Overcome evil with good. Don't fight fire with fire. It's not an eye for eye, tooth for tooth anymore. It's all about God's love, grace, and mercy that supersedes vengeance. He said, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. He said, I will repay. I didn't ask you to pay anything back. I didn't ask you to take revenge on those uh, that have done you wrong. He said, I want you to love them. I'll take care of the vengeance. Thus saith the Lord God of hosts. See, Jesus told us to love our enemies. He did not just talk the talk, but he walked the walk. He went to Calvary for all mankind, both good and evil, for all our sinners, and have come short of the glory of God, I don't care how good you think you might be. I don't care how much money you may give to your organization. I don't care how high a status you have in the community. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And then the Bible says, but the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God. Tell somebody the gift of God. The gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Because he walked down through uh, the Via Dolorosa or the way of the cross. He carried the cross for you and for me. See, my friends, they hung him high and stretched him wide. See, my friends, he hung, bled, and died for the sins of the world. His precious blood, his Sinless blood came streaming down to cleanse a sinner from his or her sins and to atone for the sins of all mankind. Yes, my friend. He hung. Yes, he did. He bled. And he died for you and for me. He gave up the ghosts. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He said, it's finished. Hung his head in his shoulders, and he died. They took him off the cross. Laid him in Joseph's brand new tomb. But oh, my friends, that wasn't the end of the story. But well, there's a resurrection that must take place. There is a fulfillment of the Holy Scriptures that Jesus said uh, uh, you can uh, knock the temple down and in three days 
I will build it again. His temple was his body. He laid there one day and all thought that it was lost. Laid there two days and I can imagine Satan having a party rejoicing with all the demons thinking that they had quelched the voice and the existence of Jesus Christ of the Lord. But early one third day morning, God raised Jesus from the dead. The angel rolled the stone away. Jesus walked out triumphantly with all power and heaven and earth in his hands. He said, I want you to love your enemies. He said, I want you to love your enemies. He said, I want you to love your enemies. He said, I want you to love your enemies. And let me do the rest. For God is love. And his eternal love is shown to our enemies when we love them with the love of our God. Amen. Love your enemies. Today there is someone who may be listening or watching. And you think all hope is gone. But I've come by this morning very briefly to let you know that today is your day for salvation. Tomorrow is not promised to you, me, or anybody else. But today is the day to make up your mind, this hour, that you want to make Jesus Christ your Savior today. Or if you just pray these words out loud and believe by faith the words that you pray, just say, Dear God in heaven, Say, I confess my sins today. And dear God, I beg your forgiveness. Tell him, tell him something. Say, say, dear God, please forgive me of all my sins and transgressions and wash me clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. Say these words, my friend. Say, I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. And I believe in my heart that God, you raised Jesus from the dead. Now with his heartfelt confession and belief in the saving power of God, I now know that I am saved. I am saved. Thank God Almighty, I am saved. Somebody just ought to say praise the Lord this morning. Say praise the Lord for the salvation of the sinner man and the sinner woman. I want, to, I want you to know today, my friends, if you prayed that prayer and you believed the words that you prayed, uh, then uh, by faith in Jesus, you are a brand new believer in Christ Jesus. Do something for me. Now start reading your Bible on a daily basis. Start reading, beginning the New Testament. Start praying to God daily through the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Then pray to God the Father in secret prayer that he leads you by his Holy Spirit. To be able to join a Bible-believing, Christian, Bible-teaching church where you can be discipled by Christian leadership and join in fellowship with a fellow group of baptized believers in Jesus Christ. And God will abundantly and he will mightily bless your Christian walk. God bless you today and may heaven smile upon you. And may the Lord be with you this day and forevermore. In closing, we say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen.